Hello everyone and welcome back. In this new lesson we are going to talk about what exactly is NGRX and we are going to discuss when should we use it and why and what are the main benefits of this technology. So first NGRX stands for Angular Reactive Extensions and it's a state management solution for the Angular ecosystem based on a popular state management solution called Redux. Now, what is exactly a state management solution and why do we need it? Well, the best way to understand that is to go over a small application that doesn't do any state management. That's exactly what we have here in the initial starting point of our course. We have here a small application, which is, by the way, not fully implemented. Some of the CRUD operations, such as, for example, deleting a course, are currently not yet implemented. We are going to do that throughout the course, but we already have here some of the functionality implemented. And we have this functionality without a state management solution. So let's look at the normal behavior of the application. I'm going to quickly reload here the application here on the courses page. So as we have seen, and I'm going to reload it again, we have here a loading indicator in the beginning while the courses data is getting fetched from the backend. Now let's quickly do here some navigation of the application. Let's for example click here on the view button so that we head over to the course page and let's pay attention to the loading of data. So as we can see, after a moment, the data has been loaded. And if we open here our network tab, here in our Chrome DevTools, we are going to see also the multiple HTTP requests that have been made so far. So if I go back here to the courses page, we are going to see that we see here an HTTP request to the slash API slash courses URL. And this is what is getting us back the data from the backend. Now, if I click here on the view course button, we are going to get here a second request to the same courses API to fetch again the data needed. Now, if we go back here to the same page as we were before, we are going to see that again we are doing another HTTP request in order to display the data and we are showing to the user again a loading indicator. So we have loaded this data initially. When we navigate to a page, we are going to load some of the data again and we are going to get here a brief pause while the data gets loaded. And if we go back to the previous courses page, we are going to load the data a third or fourth time. So this is a typical application that does not use any state management solution. While we navigate through the application, whenever we change from one screen to the other, all the data that that screen needs is going to get fetched each time from the backend. Now, this solution is very simple to implement. Each component, such as, for example, the home component, which corresponds to this list of courses with a couple of tabs that we see here on the screen, is implemented in a very simple way. So if we open here the home component TypeScript file, we're going to see that this component gets injected here in the constructor, a courses HTTP service that is a plain Angular HTTP based service that then gets used here in ng on init to load all the courses from the backend. This is then assigned here to a couple of observable variables such as beginner courses, advanced courses and promo total, where we also add here some filtering to filter the data or even to accumulate it like we do here whenever we are calculating the total number of courses that are currently in promotion, we're going to define these free observables and we're going to pass these observables to the template of the component via the async pipe. So as you can see here, we are passing the promotion total observable directly here to this part of the template that is displaying a promotional counter. And we are also passing in here the beginner and advanced courses to each of the two tabs in our home screen. Now let's continue exploring our application. Let's click here on the edit button of the first course in our list. And we're going to see here an edit course dialog. So this will allow us to edit the data that we have here. Let's say that, for example, we would like to do something like switching the category of the course. Let's say that this was an advanced course. And let's also say that we would like to make this course a promotion course. So the course is currently under a reduced price. So whenever we click here on the save button 
and I'm not going to do that immediately, we are going to do a HTTP request to the backend in order to save the data. And we are also going to close the dialog. Now the problem is that this operation of data modification has had some impact on the data that gets displayed here on the screen. So that operation that we did has changed, for example, here, the location of the course by switching it here from the beginners tab to the advanced tab. Maybe we could have also changed the title of the course and also the value of the promotion counter should switch from zero to one. So there were no courses under promotion and we have marked this course as being in promotion. So the value one should be displayed here. Now, how would we do that in an application that does not do any state management? Well, editing the data locally here at the level of this component would be difficult because maybe this data would be used somewhere else on the application. So here in a typical application without any state management solution, if we would modify the data, let's say by activating here the promotion and switching the course to advanced, whenever we do a save and the data gets modified in the backend, we are typically going to have to reload all the data on the screen in order to be able to display the updated data to the user. So as you can see, we have again shown a loading indicator to the user. We have refreshed again one more time all the same data that we had already fetched multiple times and and we have moved the course here to the advanced tab and we have also modified the title. So this is an example of a typical application without any state management solution. The components are very simple to implement, but on the other hand, we are constantly issuing HTTP requests to the server in order to fetch the same data again and again from the server. And this is due to multiple reasons. One of the main reasons being that the data that we have here in the front end under the form of these observable variables is not independent of the life cycle of this component. So these variables here are tied to the home component. So whenever we navigate away from this component and the component gets destroyed and we get back again to a new instance of the component, we are going to have to recreate these variables. So in this type of applications, the life cycle of the data is tied to the life cycle of each component. So that's why each major screen in our application has to fetch again the data from the server each time that the component gets instantiated. Now, while this solution is a viable solution for a lot of applications, we would like to build an application that has a much improved user experience. So we would like to build an application that doesn't have to do these constant HTTP requests from the server to fetch the same data again and again, just because we have switched from one screen to the other. So we want to sort of create an in-memory database on the client side where we are going to keep our data while the application is still active. We would also like to avoid to have to constantly show these loading indicators to the user with each page transition. So if we have just fetched the data from the server a moment ago, we would like the transition to be immediate. There is no need to contact the server again to fetch data that was not modified. Also, in the case when the data do gets modified, we would like that modification to be reflected in the user interface immediately so the save can be as much as possible done in the background without disturbing the user experience. So in this case, we would immediately update here the screen. We would, in this particular case, switch the NGRX course from the beginners tab to the advanced tab. We would update the promotion counter without having to again fetch the same data from the server. So let's summarize the type of features that we want in an improved version of this application. We would like to reduce as much as possible the number of unnecessary HTTP requests to the server. We would like to do only the requests that we absolutely need. We would like to create an in-memory database that contains our data that is independent of the life cycle of any component. This will allow the data to survive during navigations in our application and will avoid the need of constantly fetching the data from the server again. We would like to build a much improved user experience that does not involve constantly having to show to the user loading indicators. 
We would like as much as possible for all database save operations to be done in the background without interrupting the user experience. And we would like those modifications to be immediately reflected on the screen. More than that, we would not like to have to write specific logic to handle all the data modification edge cases. For example, we would not like to want to write some specific code that would detect if the dialog has changed the category of the course to determine if we should swap the course between one tab and the other. We would like simply that the view updates itself with the new version of the data without having to handle all the data modification edge cases one by one separately. So in summary, what we need in order to implement all these features is a state management solution. And that's exactly what NGRX is. It's an Angular specific state management solution that will allow us to create a client-side database with our data and it will allow us to minimize the number of HTTP requests done to the server. It will allow us to easily have different parts of our view reflect new versions of the data. It's going to allow us to have a much improved user experience with minimal loading indicators and having the UI immediately reflect the data modifications without having to call again the server. So when compared to a traditional application made without any state management, this is really a next generation application that we are talking about with a much improved user experience and performance. We are going to learn how to use NGRX in order to implement all those features in our application. NGRX is based on the store architecture, so let's quickly cover it and then let's get started adding NGRX to our application and adding all these statement management features one by one.